All right. Well, welcome to all of you who are on the call. We're happy that you're here today. We've had a very busy week of launching our telehealth platform. It's been crazy chaotic and lots of fun to, to give all of our practitioners an opportunity to do something different in the middle of this quarantine crisis. So we've made a few changes in the past week. If you were on the webinar last week, we talked about quite a bit how we'll be evolving this platform every day as, um, as we get better at it, we learn more things, we get more connections and integration. So we've got a few things to show you today and also a bit of a roadmap of what's coming next. So I'll go ahead and advance forward here and cover a little bit of our agenda. So what's new for telehealth? So I've got a couple things to show you this week that vary again from last week. Um, first of all, it's a bit easier for the patient provider to connect. So we were using a different system last week that worked beautifully, but it's a little bit challenging um, from the iPad, especially to enable your microphone, enable your camera. So we have a brand new system that will be launching today as soon as the call is over that makes it very simple to do a one click and you're in the portal and you can do your virtual consult in a much easier way. So hopefully if you've had any hiccups last week from using the system or this week, this will make it a little bit easier for patients to get in. We've also enabled the ability to take payments from the booking screen. So if you're charging for your virtual consults and using that money as a down payment, if you will, on a future procedure or a prepay, you're able to do that right from the screens and they book their appointment. So you can put a little verbiage in about what that looks like um, what the payment's for, but they're able to actually run their credit card, just like we use in our cancellation fees, right from the screen. We're also going to show you today the electronic enabled prescription. So just to make sure we're clear, it's not e-prescribed yet. I've got a call today with a group about integrating that, but in the meantime, you can actually fax a prescription virtually through the portal to a pharmacy of your choice, as long as there's a working fax number. So we'll show you how to do that today as well. And then we've also got some really interesting enhanced predictive notes and some um, new recall functions to help with patient medical history to get that right in the chart with a single click. So I've got a couple new things happening there. And then just to give you some overview of what's going to happen next, hopefully by the end of the weekend, you'll be able to send your questionnaires and consents directly to the patient portal. So if you want to consent your patients on a HIPAA consent, a photo consent, if you're doing some screenshots and things, whatever that looks like, you can do that all now from the portal. So hopefully on Monday that goes live. We're also working to integrate some medical billing. So those of you that want to do true medical exams via telehealth to be able to do your ICD-10 codes, your CTP codes, and send that over for billing. And then we're also going to be adding in the opportunity to do lab orders. So if you want to not only see your patients virtually, but also order labs for them through various functions, whoever does your labs in your community, you'll be able to order your lab. So those three things are coming soon. Um, they're sort of in order of the difficulty of how hard they are to do as we go down the, the path here, but they are coming soon. So if you are using this for medical, you've had to pivot um, your company and your business in the middle of this crisis. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to see medical patients and aesthetic patients and hopefully recoup some of the money that we're all unfortunately losing as, you know, since we're all closed at the moment. So um, that's kind of our roadmap for today. So we're going to flip right over and show you a couple things that we have in the pipeline here for you. All right, can you guys see my screen? Good. Okay, I'm depending on you, Victoria, because everyone else is muted. You're my only lifeline here. So we've gone through and booked an appointment, but uh, before doing that, just to show you a few things on the setup for our virtual clinic, let me move my little screen over here with all your beautiful faces. Um, we have a couple different options. We talked about this last week as well, but those of you who are on the call that are new, uh, we've got a few different ways to set up your clinic. So you can do either a virtual clinic. So many of our customers have come to us and said, we've shut down online booking totally for our existing clinics. We don't want to confuse our patients, but we want to be able to use a virtual clinic. So there's choices to do either a virtual clinic, which you see we've done here, our virtual clinic, versus having it within our existing clinic. So it's sometimes an easier organization. So if you're a person that's already using aesthetic record, we can certainly help you to set up a new clinic that's called like virtual clinic or telehealth clinic. Um, if, you're, if you're a brand new AR customer, you may just want to build a virtual clinic to start, and that's your only clinic for now. And then you build on your actual brick and mortar as we open back up for business. So to give you a few little glances here of doing this, Victoria, you, you're welcome to take over if you want. I just kind of started going, as I often no, do. You're, you're good. <laughs> I'll have you finish sharing on your screen because you've got it all set up. Yeah. If you go into settings, keep having to move us around over here, our little Zoom pictures. 
let me get this, there we go. If you go into your settings and you go into your manage clinics, you see here we have a couple different options. We've got our beautiful aesthetics, lovely lines, med spa, and our new virtual clinic. If you wanted to create a virtual clinic, it's pretty simple. It's intuitive to hit create clinic and you can name it what you want to name it. In our case, let's say it's virtual clinic, you know, number two, put in your information here, your hours, the things you would normally do to set up your clinic, the country that you're in, and then you hit save. One important thing to note about your virtual clinic, this has come up this week quite a bit, is if you are in, let's say the Eastern time zone, your appointments online will render in the Eastern time zone. So you've got patients booking from all over the country or all over the world. Be cognizant of the fact that the time zone that renders on your online booking is going to show appointments in your time zone. So if you're on Pacific time with patients on Eastern time, there may be a bit of a discrepancy there about what time it actually is for the appointment. So it's going to always default to your time zone as the clinic. So once you've done your clinic here, you can go in and add some different services. So we'll go ahead and get that done as well. So in order to add some things to your new virtual clinic, you can go into your appointments tab. And we have what's called a smart configuration. So for us, the smart configuration just walks an account user, an AR user, down the path to set up their services, to set up their rooms, their resources, their providers. So if you click that, it's a pretty easy, you'll see a little here, a little roadmap that takes you right down the, right down the line here. So for us, we have lots of providers. We're not gonna add a new one um, right now, but I can show you if you are, let's look at our friend Margo Parker, who's one of our virtual clinic rock stars. Let's find Margo. And we can look at her calendar. You see here, prior to the COVID-19 quarantine, she was scheduled at Lovely Lines, and now she's scheduled for the virtual clinic. So you can simply add a schedule to a, an existing provider, change it, change their hours. They can do 10 to two and three to seven or whatever you want that to be. It's pretty simple just to add a quick schedule here and change up her schedule. So Margo is currently booked every day. Oh, she's got some late days here on Tuesday till 10 p.m. But she's doing virtual consults all the time. So that part's pretty easy. Just add your providers in. I uh, would do it to the teammate section and then come into the schedule here to add their schedule. And now for us on services, one of the things I recommend strongly if you think about your virtual clinic is to make it really simple for your patients. So your patients are also in the same boat that you're in where they're trying to figure out what to do with, you know, uh, being at home all day and, and lots of things happening, tutoring their kids, all the things I'm doing right now. So in order to make it really simple, if you want to make a category and call it virtual appointments, or telehealth appointments or virtual clinic. And you can put all the things that you're doing under the virtual world in that one category. It's really simple for them to find. So we've named ours virtual appointments. And then we have for our services, we'll show you a couple of them here. We've got all sorts of virtual services. So here's a virtual consultation, but to create one, pretty simple. We can click either in person, which right now is obviously not a choice or virtual. And we have our lovely virtual appointments category makes it simple at our virtual clinic. We're gonna do a 30 minute consult. It's not free, we're gonna charge 50 bucks for it. And we're gonna call it, let's call it a virtual toxin consult. And we're gonna put Margot Parker, who's our number one gal, as our provider. And we may put here, um, toxin consultation, $50 will be used toward future purchase. Now when the patient goes in and books this particular procedure, they'll be asked to pay the $50 at that point. And then of course, roll that over into a later procedure for $50. So if you're asking yourself, well, how do we get this to the patients? We have what's called our booking portal. And it's pretty simple. It automatically generates for you a URL that you can just embed in your website. So our patients get to this through an online booking portal. And you see here for our different clinics, all different types. You can just specifically put in your virtual clinic URL so that they only see your virtual clinic when they go in to book an appointment and you can take away all the others. So if you wanted to show all of your clinics at once, you have like a master URL. If you wanna just, it's so right here, all clinics. If you wanna just show your virtual, you could just use this one. So those of you who are WordPress geniuses or work on websites, it's really simple to create a button and put that in there and you're good to go. Once I click that link, they'll go into the online booking portal. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. So we go back to our calendar to see our good works that we just did. We'll go to our online booking link here. So this is the provider version or the control center that you see as a practitioner in AR. The patient won't see this screen, but they'll see once you click online booking, they'll see this screen. So when they're in this particular portal here, they can decide in person 
or virtual. We're going to choose virtual in our virtual clinic and click continue. And we're going to do our virtual talks and consult we just created. And we're going to put that to Margot Parker. And she's in the clinic today. And we'll put this in here. I'll put my real name just so you guys can see the credit card. I'll keep plugging along here and then we'll show you what the actual terminal looks like when you log in. Give me one second here. You guys can text me later. There you go. There's my phone number. I'm going to get my OTP 063196. 063196. We're going to hit verify. Continue. And you see here the prompt. So if you've chosen to charge for your consult or to charge for your telehealth exam, if you're doing co-pays up front, whatever it is you want to do to charge to hold the space, you see this screen. If you choose to do a free consultation, so on that same screen we built our service, you could click free. So you'd click yes and not no. This would not render on the screen. This only shows up if you choose to charge. So you see here a note that will be charged for the virtual appointment. You'd fill this in, hit continue, and then the appointment is now booked on the calendar. So. I will see, are there any questions or concerns about that? I don't see any Q&A going up, no hands being raised. So I think we're okay there. I'm gonna exit out of this portal and show you what that looks like inside of our appointment schedule. So we didn't actually complete that appointment because we obviously didn't put a credit card in. But if let's say that Maddie Roberts here who is on our schedule was that patient. Once you click her appointment, you see here a join meeting. By clicking join meeting, you go directly into your patient portal, provider portal at the shared virtual clinic. And so on the day of the appointment, and only on that day, you'll see this join meeting. And it's only going to show for you if you're the provider. Part of the protection with HIPAA and encryption is it's a provider to patient only link. So as the patient, Maddie received both an email and a text with the information to log in. So if there's an appointment reminder that says, hey, Maddie, here's your appointment. We can show you that as well. Click on this link on the day of the meeting at the time of, our, of your appointment at the time of your appointment. So when she clicks that link, she goes into the portal as a provider, as Margo, I'd go in here and click join meeting and I go into the portal. But again, that only shows up on the day of the appointment, only in the appointment card for whoever is doing the appointment. So Victoria and I have got one that we're going to flip over and show you. I'm going to put us on no camera and we're going to share our screen and show you how it works. So give me just a second here to stop my video and to move over to our other screen. Three, two, one, three, four. Okay, then I want to make sure you guys can see this. Can you see my verify OTP screen? Is that showing up? Perfect. Okay. So this is for the, I'm on the patient side now. So when the patient goes to log in, as I mentioned, the provider is protected through the provider join meeting link. So when Victoria went in as a provider, so we just kind of swipped, we swapped spots here, she was only able to access this link through the appointment card as a provider. As the patient, I'm also able to access it, but only when I put in my OTP code. So if you notice on the appointment side, when I booked it, I put my phone number in and had an OTP code. The same is true here. So I'm again gonna verify my identity, 542134, and once I'm in, Well, I'm not Justin Harper, but that's okay. I am Tilo here. So you see at the top, this medical logo. Can you guys see the screen? Are they able to see it? Am I muted? I gonna, you'll want to mute your telehealth screen. Yeah, was I like echoing like a crazy person? <laughs> You're all so good that, now. <laughs> that's a good thing to see here. You see this little X, um, you can mute yourself here. So you see archiving is on, this is being recorded. So the entire meeting is recorded from start to finish. It's archived in an encrypted fashion um, on our end and it will be transcribed and put in your patient's portal and they're under their procedure notes. But whatever your practice logo is that you're using for online booking within our portal will show up here. So the portal is branded, if you will, for your clinic. So it looks and feels like your clinic. Um, we're using right now the, the generic medical logo so for now, um, if you look at the portal the way it sits right now, since I'm the one who's showing the screen, I'm tiny and Victoria's big. On her end, she sees me as uh, big and she's tiny. So it's a pretty simple interface. You saw we just clicked and went right in. It works on all your browsers, Google Chrome, uh, Safari, and Mozilla Firefox on the web. 
We tested yesterday and on the iPad and iPhone, the preferred would be Safari. It works quite a bit better on Safari. It just looks a little bit better working through some UI fixes on Google Chrome. But if you're using Safari, which is a default, obviously in your iOS system, you'll have a beautiful same rendering that you see here. So this is how it works. Um, and we're all recorded, as I mentioned. And so once we finish our appointment, we would hit leave meeting. But the good news is we can interact. So I can see Victoria over there. She's talking. She can see me. Um, and you're on your Mac, correct? Yes. OK. And I'm on a PC. So the good news is that the UI looks great for both of us. So this is, in essence, how you complete your telehealth component of, of your meeting. So again, a quick link for both people. They come in here. If for some reason you, cl you click the link preemptively, like the day before or on accident, it has multiple uses. So again, because you're identifying yourself as a provider and they are as a patient, you can keep coming back in. So if Victoria gets kicked out or she forgets or she didn't do something correctly and her Wi-Fi went down, she can click right back in to enter the meeting again and we can just restart our appointment. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll turn off this if we feel good about it. So I'll see you in a second, Victoria on Zoom. All right, let's go back. Everybody back in business? We're back. Okay, so I have a few more fun things to show you in AR. Hopefully someone's managing our questions if we're having any, because I'm just, oh, we have a QA. and a Let's see. It does, Jay. It retains the video for document purposes. So the video is saved in perpetuity as long as you need it um, in an encrypted fashion. So it'll be in your system, saved and ready. There'll also be a transcript. So one of the beautiful things about using Amazon as our hosting service is it will do all the transcription for us. So once our system records your video, it'll transcribe it. And you'll be able to store it in their portal. So the cool thing right now is that although the consents are not able to be um, sent in the portal in this exact moment, you can always do a verbal consent. So as long as you've given the patient informed consent, they can agree to it verbally and that will be saved as a transcribed um, Q&A or you know, question and answer kind of thing and also video. So it'll be there for right now, but very, very soon it'll all be sent to the patient portal. So we're going to show a couple of fun new note things that make me happy. So one of the things we talked about a lot within this new system is we're really initially we're really built for cosmetics. Um, and as we've done this, we see people using a system for dentistry. We've had a few people doing sleep apnea in, in other countries with our system as of yesterday. So lots of really interesting things happening. So we had to reconfigure our note taking system to make it very medical friendly. So I'm going to take you through, we had just finished our appointment with Maddie, our patient here. I'm going to walk you through a couple of new features on our dot phrases. So let me go into Maddie's appointment or her patient tab here. Let's see. So if we had just hung up with her and she's done a virtual toxin consult, she's a phenomenal choice for it. We think she's just perfect for some cheek filler. We're going to go into our timeline here. So you see we have a health timeline and a cosmetic timeline. So again, they're a little bit different. If you're seeing patients in your clinic every day, the cosmetic timeline might be preferred. It's where we have all of our pictures, our before and afters, our video before and afters, a lot of the very cosmetic type things, marking on the face with your procedures and adding syringes and notes. Uh, much more cosmetic timeline focused, but obviously in a virtual world, we can't do those things. So we're going to use our health timeline. We're going to create a procedure. So we're going to call this her filler consult. Actually, we'll call it virtual because we didn't get to see her in real life. We have her appointment today, let's say. And I'm going to change it to myself. There we go. In the virtual clinic. So we have what's called dot phrases. And we've gone through, if you're a brand new AR user, we have built for you some pre-configured dot phrases and what those are just predictive notes. If you're an existing AR customer, we actually loaded some in for you that you could use if you chose that are really fo focused on the virtual aspect of our new telehealth platform. But to give you an example, if we're looking at Madison's chart, if I type in virtual filler, you see here, these are my options. So it's going to call to our dot phrases universe and decide which one of these we want to choose. We're going to choose virtual filler. And if you notice here, it pre-configures for me all the things I'd want to know in a virtual consult. So I'm going to change some things here. Today is the, let's see, 26th or 27th. Ooh, I've lost a day. That's what quarantine will do for you. 27th. You just lose, you just lose <laughs> the days. So we'll be able to change our time here. And then in talking with Madison, AKA Victoria, 
we decided that she probably just needs maybe some temple filler. We're going to go with two cc's of Restylane because she's got some problems we've got to fix them for. And let's look at maybe, you know what, we think that she's got some lip lines. It's been a rough go in quarantine. She needs maybe one cc of Resty Silk. No NLFs. We use cheeks in this family. We don't do NLFs. And we're going to book her for next available um, upon reopening. I've gone through all the things here specific to her injectable history, her aging process. Is she a good candidate? Everything you see here is all done sort of automatically for us. But you may be saying to yourself, well, did you review her medical history? Is she a new patient? What do we know about her? So we added in a new feature literally last night um, that we've tested that's working beautifully. And it is to bring in all of Madison's medical history. So if we've seen her before and she's told us I have allergies, I've got food issues, I've got pre-existing conditions, we can go to what we've already established as her medical history and bring it into this node. So a simple function called at call will call through her medical history anything that we've previously documented. So we see here she's a non-smoker, she's hypoglycemic, poor girl, she needs to eat a lot. Of, that's me in the COVID-19 crisis. I'm just eating nonstop. It's terrible. Um, she has a few drug allergies, which actually might be applicable here. So we'll put those in. I'm going to also put in her existing history because it could be important. And I might want to even put in that she's a non-smoker. Could be helpful, especially with people saying it's a high risk for um, the current illness going around. So I can bring in any of her pre-existing things that we've already documented into this particular chart note without having to go through and redo it all again. So again, that's just a simple, if you're an AR user right now, you can just do at call and it brings in all the medical history that we've pre previously documented into her note. So between the call and the dot phrases, you can basically chart in, the, in nanoseconds. I also put in a dot phrase earlier that I should have told you about called dot medical history, which would say we reviewed her medical history with the patient. And here's the things that we reviewed. So you can do this entire note, but I don't know how long it took us. I was obviously talking you through it, but pretty quick. We can go down, we can save it. And now we see from Madison, she has her entire note here saved. So any questions on that before I move on? No one has any Q&A today. Last week we had non-stop Q&A. We must not be as funny this week. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But if you look here at this prescription, so one of the things that we have just put in, um, it is being tested right now to deliver to you today. So we're going to show you on our development portal what it looks like, because I don't know if you guys know much about technology, but you have to push it live into a production environment, which is this. So I'm going to show you on the back end what it looks like. Um, so again, it's going to be a little, little less pretty than you might see in the real, the real function, but I'm going to swap over and hopefully, can you see now my new screen, Victoria? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. So. We've gone through and we've we've just done one. So if, let's say we had Madison Roberts, the same patient. We were seeing her for medical instead. And we know she's got some issues with her thyroid. She needs to get a prescription refilled. And she has no way to get to her, you know, her GP right now. So we can help her do that because we're also a physician who sees her and it's part of her healthcare plan. I could actually build for her a prescription here. We've already done one. So I'll show you what it looks like. So you see here her thyroid. So her prescription we put in for Nature Throid. We have her form, her strength, her quantity directions per day, dose and refills. We've used Walgreens. And so when we built this prescription, we put in a fax number and it auto sent that to, to Walgreens. So for instance, I'll show you how we could do that. Let me give you a new, actually I've got to probably make her a new procedure if I'm gonna add in some prescriptions here. So let's just call this a test. And we're gonna do, we'll just call this test. And I'm going to, whoop, if I can, let me get my screen to go a little bit smaller here. There we go. So once I'm in here, if I want to do the prescription for her, hit prescription, and you see here, we can just fill it out. So it's a test prescription, test medication. We're going to do it, um, you know, I don't know, tablet form. Strength is, you know, 10 milligrams, whoop, bucket type, 10 milligrams, quantity 30. And this is based off of the universal pharmacy, um, our prescription form that you would use at Walgreens, CVS, anywhere that would take it. It's sort of a universal form that everyone takes. So for now, let's say she's doing it once a day and we have her dose, which again is 10 milligrams because it's doing it once a day, three refills. 
Once I select pharmacy, I may have some that are already saved. And again, we're in a test account. Some of these are sort of random tests. But let's say I want to add a new one. Once you add new, when you embed the fax number here and the phone number, anytime you use that pharmacy and you send the prescription there, if you were to hit save, it's going to go to that pharmacy. So let's say we're doing Walgreens and we're going to do other. She's going to actually pick it up. So patient pickup. She's not on a stay in shelter. She can go out and get her, her medication. So we hit save and now the prescription is saved to her chart. And we've also just faxed to Walgreens based on whatever fax number we were using for Walgreens. We've electronically faxed that prescription to her. I'm sorry, to her pharmacy. So she can just certainly have a copy as well. You can export that to her for her to have it. But we've now sent it to Walgreens directly via fax um, in an online fax. So again, we're not calling it e-prescribe. That's not yet in our system. We're working through that right now to get the database connected and some multiple layers of things done. But in the meantime, you can send prescriptions now via fax using the universal form to any of your pharmacies. Um, and if she has obviously her insurance at the pharmacy counter, she'd be using that, et cetera. So you're sending off the, the prescription for her uh, and it will have your, you know, your license number on it, your name as a provider, et cetera, all done through there. So some things coming to that to tweak it. But hopefully by the end of the day today, I don't know what time it is, 11.30, but at the end of the day today, you'll have a full prescription where we can go in and put your prescriptions in and hit send. So that was just a kind of an overview test of the prescriptions to show you, but lots more coming there. So hopefully on Monday morning, when you wake up bright and early to go do your telehealth visits, you can start prescribing. Um, all the call notes and things are live right now. So you can do all your call notes in there and your, your predictive dot phrases. Um, and if you're thinking to yourself, okay, what is all this going to cost and how do I get started? The good news for you, hopefully good news for you, is that this is not going to be a financial burden. Uh, obviously, things right now are a little hectic, but we're happy to waive all of our setup fees for you if you want to get started. Uh, it's a zero setup fee. Our team is waiting. We've been onboarding people all week long, uh, lots and lots of onboarding. And for a provider to use this at $12 a person per month, so you're able to, to really start basically in an hour or two's time for 12 bucks. And then we also have the ability to take payments here in the system as well. So I'll let Victoria take us through the payment part in just a second, but you're able to do all of your virtual payments in here. We have a virtual terminal to make it really, really simple for you to take all the payments. Um, we have no contract luckily. So if you're using this just for the short term to get through the COVID-19 crisis and go back to your regular EMR, that's certainly an option for you. We hope that you'd stick around as well, but um, to get started, it's very, very simple. Our team is again, waiting, waiting to help you in any way that we can. And I would say, Victoria, if you wanna walk through some payment things you're more than welcome to, or I'll take any questions yeah. right now from anybody that has questions, which no one has questions. We should have used funny memes today. <laughs> Maybe they would have been a little I bit know. more excited about this. I'll let, I'm going to stop my share. If you can want to start your share, we could probably have Madison buy a couple things if she's so inclined. Let's sell her on some stuff. Okay, so... All right, we see you started sharing. We're good. Okay. All right, so let's go back to, oops. All right, so um, for anyone who is new to Aesthetic Record, you can take all of your payments directly through an iPad. So I'm going to be sharing my screen with you, or I actually am sharing my screen with you. Um, and I will take you through how to take those payments even if your patient is, you know, um, just doing a virtual meeting with you, they could still purchase skincare products, anything of that sort. So on the app here, you will notice that there's a credit card icon. So if I click that card icon, I can go ahead and search for my patient name. So we're gonna go back to Madison. All right, and so at this point in time, let's say that you know we figured out that this redness corrector was right was the right product for her we can go ahead and insert this to the cart and if I maximize my cart um, there would be any tax associated so our team can actually help you set all of this stuff up it's very very quick to get um, uploaded into the system but basically at this point in time if I was doing a consultation with her I can go ahead and click that checkout screen and you will notice down here at the bottom we can just insert the card number now there is the ability to, um, if she had already entered in her payment details over online booking, um, her card would be saved to her profile. And so at that point in time, I could just use a card that was saved, but I also have the ability to go ahead and type in any relevant information. So 
Once again, this would be ideal if your practice is shipping products out to patients during this time. Um, this would be an ideal way to finalize that transaction. And then, you know, you can still capture your funds that way while shipping all, all of the products out to your patients. So um, you'll notice here you have a couple of different payment methods. But once again, if you were using that card method, you can just type the number down below. I am going to use a cash transaction to just finalize this so I can show you the next screen here. So this screen right here, this allows us to send a receipt. So this is um, you know, really, really important in this point of time. If we wanted to send our patient an electronic receipt, we just hit OK. So Tiffany's going to get a receipt now. And at this point in time, the transaction is complete, and your staff can go ahead and ship that product um, if it was coming directly out of your office. Um, but that's going to be the way that you can take those payments um, when your patient's not in the office with you. So very easy to accommodate. And then um, I'm trying to think here if there's any other important thing. So really regardless of, you know, if the patient's paying for um, a procedure ahead of time, you do have the ability to store prepayments inside of the patient wallet. So if this patient, Madison, had a few things pre-purchased in her account, they would be itemed on this screen. So I'm gonna actually take you to another patient. I think Jenna has some stuff in her wallet. Okay, so here's what a wallet would look like. She's been busy in our practice. So she's been prepaying for a lot of different things and kind of stocking up. So when the patient comes in, they have the ability to then redeem these items from the wallet and it's tracked very, very nicely inside of your reporting aspects within your account. Um, so just another nice feature to keep you organized and kind of, you know, put together during this time. So anything else you feel like would be important, Tiffany? I think this is a great example of, in our case, when we set up our service, we put a $50 consultation fee. You could turn that consultation fee into a wallet credit here so that you don't lose track of the money coming in, the money going out. And then we have an ability in our which again, Victoria's in our provider app. I was using our control center, the web, the web-based version. But inside of our control center, there's a place to track all of your short-term liabilities. So you can see anything that you owe to any patients, what those things might be. Um, if you do gift cards, so I know right now gift cards are a very big thing. It may be something where I do a virtual consult and I'm running a gift card promotion. And so Victoria says, Great, I want to take advantage of your spend a hundred and get 150. I could sell her a gift card, obviously through the same system, and then put that gift card on her wallet as a 150 credit towards her next procedure. So we do all the gift cards as well. Those are all a virtual gift card. They're not a physical gift card, so you can do them off of the system, which is just another way. I think right now I'm seeing tons of promos online around gift cards, because it's just a really good way to keep things going. If you're using a virtual inventory, if you're using inventory for any of your retail products right now as a way to, to generate revenue, I think this is a great choice here too, because even if you're not using our system in its entirety, but you're shipping out skincare products every day, we can help you get that inventory into AR. So at least you could take the payments in AR, you could sell the product in AR, keep track of it. And then also whatever your patients invoices and receipts and things are all in one place for you. So the idea here being that no matter what you're using in your everyday life, this could be a really simple way to solve your current problems. But then obviously we'd love to keep you on for the longer term with lots more robust features. Um, our inventory system is, is growing and changing. We just launched a whole new inventory system last week to make things really simple for retail product management, just we were doing it anyway and it happened to fall at this time. But I think between some of these things we have on the payment side with gift cards and such, it could be a really nice addition to you in the current non-human contact part of our world. So, mm -hmm. and I think we have, I have some skincare people on right now, some skincare vendors, they're running tons of promotions right now. If you guys are part of our AR world, you received a newsletter yesterday that included tons of promotions from our vendors who work with us on our conference and our marketplace that are running, you know, cash back, half off, no credit terms for 90 days, lots of really good things that the vendors are offering you as, as customers. So I know that Vivian sent that out yesterday. If you didn't see that, shoot us a note back and we'll make sure you get that to see sort of a roundup of all the promos that we're seeing right now in the industry. So hopefully try to get some money back in your pockets and keep things going for the foreseeable or indefinite future. Mm -hmm. That's really all I have, Victoria. Any, anybody have any yeah. last questions or thoughts? Yeah, and as a side note too, feel free to message us on Instagram, Facebook. You can also email us at info at aestheticrecord.com. So we have a team ready to train you for all of your telehealth needs or inventory management. 
virtual payments, anything of that sort. So definitely reach out to us if you would like to get started. Once again, it is just $12 per user per month. So very affordable, especially in this time. Um, but yeah, let us know if you have any questions. We'll be sending this webinar out, a recorded version after our call. So you'll have this, and obviously we also have a few training documents we can send as well. So if you're ready to get started on your own and want to do it without having us help you, we have some really good resources for that too. So hope to hear from you and see you soon, albeit virtually. Mm -hmm. And I know we'll have a webinar again next week, hopefully on just our system overall and our inventory and demo and things of all, all the various features that we have. So we hope to see you again next week. Have a great weekend. Bye everyone. Thanks. Bye.